Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Book 5 welcome back to another video, and I think it's a great time actually to start talking once again about the Nintendo Switch Pro. That's because we've gotten a lot of new evidence pointing to there being a Nintendo Switch Pro reveal slash announcement pretty, pretty soon. Without any further ado, we're just gonna get into the evidence that surrounds the Nintendo Switch Pro and if slash when it does reveal, how is it going to be implemented in the video game industry? What purpose will it serve? We're gonna get into all of that. So drop a like, subscribe to, bro. Stop playing with me. And uh, let's get into it. So the most recent thing is that Nintendo has put um, like 66,000 yen in terms of the millions, which, you know, is like 66 billion yen. And that equates to like, 500 almost 500 million dollars and they're putting that into what they call resource and development you might be like oh wow resource and development what, what's so special about that okay smart ass all right all right resources are like for instance this keycap right right this keycap right here right on my keyboard development is actually putting all the resources together you know and like building a keyboard gathering resources and we're going to be developing something using those resources so that's why a lot of people um, think that you know it's a switch pro not only that 66 thousand yen in terms of the millions that's that's a lot of yen 66 billion yen in fact it's like twice as much as what they're spending on resource and development back in 2019 when the Nintendo switch Lite came out or even 2021 last year when the switch oled came out like just a lot more so obviously they're planning for something you know bigger and better than the other two previous consoles the president of nintendo um burakawa he also refused to comment on the release of any new hardware in you know a past investors meeting which i think was in may of this year okay guess what july of last year right he also refused to comment or declined to comment on uh, the question of, you know, is there gonna be any new hardware? You know, literally did the same thing as what he did in this investors meeting. But the day after that investors meeting in 2021, the Nintendo Switch OLED was revealed. Literally the day after. And he said the exact same thing that they declined to comment about any new hardware or any upcoming hardware, right? The wording, you know, kind of suspicious. Then uh, NVIDIA got hacked. <laughs> NVIDIA got hacked, okay? And NVIDIA is what powers, you know, the Nintendo Switch's graphic cards. They make graphic cards, they power the one in my PC, they power the one in the Nintendo Switch. Um, so yeah, and in that hack, we see a graphics card specifically for a Nintendo Switch DLSS model. DLSS is an upscaling um, technique used by developers, which, you know, imitates 4K. Um, it's not actual native 4K, but it imitates 4K. Uh, it looks better and it takes a lot of stress off of, you know, other areas within uh, the console to my understanding right so we'll get into that though so that is again another piece of evidence now we have actual insiders you know um, i'm referring to jeff grubb but uh, and some other people you know but like not not like the twitter posters not like samus hunter not like leaky panda or whatever like we have actual insiders you know who have been accurate in the past you know who have a very good track record who have predicted things that you know you wouldn't even begin to be able to guess you know even if you were making some stuff up you know, they are saying that there's a nintendo switch dlss model that is coming forward pretty soon very exciting all right and then finally developers have said that they have kits dev kits, the development kits for a Nintendo Switch DLSS model. <laughs> yeah, what what more proof do you need? Like, like th there are leaks, right? And then there's like leaks that are like backed with evidence. Like this is one of those leaks that <laughs> has a mountain of evidence backed behind it. And even, even if, you know, there weren't these leaks, 
we just know based on principle that Nintendo is working on the next thing because they always are. PlayStation or Sony right now is working on developing the PS6 or whatever, like right now as we speak, you know, it, it's probably, you know, in the first beginning stages being conceptualized, but you know, that's what these companies do. I do believe right now as we speak that they are developing a Nintendo Switch Pro, not a next gen, next Nintendo console that shouldn't even have the word Switch associated with it. You know, I'm just referring to the Nintendo Switch Pro what we should have gotten that the OLED wasn't, you know, what we thought the OLED was going to be. Okay, the Nintendo Switch Pro. Okay, we know that this is in existence, but what we just found out was that it's kind of eminent. So now that we know that there is a new model, the question is, how is it going to be presented to us? And just real quick, let's just state some, you know, occurrences that happened within Nintendo, you know, that just points to there being a Nintendo Switch Pro, okay? First, most recent, no Nintendo Direct, okay? They knew that they had to put something out for June as they put something out for June every single year, you know, whether it be a Nintendo Direct, usually is a Nintendo Direct, E3, something, right? This June, we did not get a Nintendo Direct. We didn't even get a Nintendo Direct Mini, but we got a Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase, okay? A Partner Showcase. Games that aren't made by Nintendo, right? So why was that? You know, everybody was disappointed, myself included. I even threw up a meme, okay? I, I was also disappointed, right? But why do you think they did that? We know that they have a lot of things to show. That's why we were so frustrated with there not being a Direct. You know, I was looking at it, I was like, there's, there's not like Splatoon 3's coming out in two months. It's not like, you know, you have Breath of the Wild, Spring 2023, the sequel. We don't even know the sequel's name. I think that they're waiting to unveil something else, which would strongly coincide with most of the games that they have going forward. For instance, Nintendo Switch Pro isn't announced yet. You know, it's not ready to be announced yet, but almost, you know, and once they do announce it, then they can announce, you know, they can start to build it up by using these games as these titles, you know. Breath of the Wild 2 is still going to be released on the Nintendo Switch, but it's also gonna be released alongside our Nintendo Switch Pro at launch. So you can experience this new, highly anticipated game in all of its glory. Perfect selling point, you know what I'm saying? Also, Breath of the Wild 2, while we're on that topic, was delayed to 2022. No, it wasn't. Breath of the Wild 2 was delayed to spring of next year, 2023. Originally, it was supposed to come out in 2022 i just think that the game is you know taking forever anyways because it's a huge game obviously you know so i think that they're gonna need the extra time anyways but you know specifically like spring of 2023 that's kind of you know specific you know also call of duty wants to be on the nintendo switch obviously we're going from activision who you know previously laughed at the idea that the Nintendo Switch would have Call of Duty on it. They're like, yeah, fuck no, you did that weak ass console. We're not making Call of Duty on that. Any chance Black Ops 4 is coming to Switch? <laughs> uh, I just make the shoes. To Microsoft now owning um, Call of Duty, the head of Microsoft was like, oh yeah, definitely. Literally said in a Twitter post, yeah, we want Call of Duty to be on the Nintendo Switch. It can't because the Switch is very underpowered. It can't run Call of Duty, but Nintendo Switch Pro could. So how will the Nintendo Switch Pro appear, okay? So I think that there are three major games that kind of gave it away, you know, just they look suspiciously better than uh, all the other games that were coming out for the Nintendo Switch, you know? You have Splatoon 3, which is coming out in um, September, on September 9th, exactly. So, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, maybe a, a holiday 2022 release for the Switch Pro. It would be a little late for Splatoon 3 to coincide with the Switch Pro. I don't think that those two are going to be, you know, like peanut butter and jelly, just like, like, for instance, Breath of the Wild 2 and the Switch Pro. I think that Splatoon 3 is separate from Switch Pro, but Splatoon 3 would be on the Switch Pro and it would run better. Especially when you're looking at the two trailers, when you're looking at the reveal trailer and then you're looking at like the gameplay trailer, you know what I mean? Where, you know, they're actually in game, in theater mode, showing you live footage of Splatoon 3. You know, that had to have been on the Switch and that looks significantly not as good in terms of like the graphics, like the gameplay was fine, but like in terms of the graphics, it just wasn't on par to 
the the trailers and whatnot. So potentially one could have been running on the Nintendo Switch Pro, the other the Nintendo Switch. I just sort of look at those two trailers and see, okay, this is probably what Splatoon 3 on the Nintendo Switch would look like. This is probably what Splatoon 3 on the Nintendo Switch Pro would look like. Also, Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. <sighs> That game looked incredible. It, <laughs> again, I can see it running on the Nintendo Switch, but on a Nintendo Switch Pro, I can also see that. And then of course, Breath of the Wild 2, there's even some developers that reported upon seeing, you know, the delay trailer, the delay announcement trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 that, oh, this looks too good to be on a normal Nintendo Switch. And that's when we started to get another batch of Nintendo Switch Pro rumors. So. Obviously, I can see Breath of the Wild 2 being on a Switch Pro. I think it has to. I think, you know, just for us to experience everything that Breath of the Wild 2 has to offer, it really has to be on the Switch Pro. Because Breath of the Wild was already a huge game and it pushed the Switch to its limits, you know. I still feel like that's the biggest first party title that we had, you know. But we had frame rate issues in some areas of the map and whatever. So if we're making like, if we're expanding to the skies and developers have said that there's like another aspect on top of the new skies, I'm thinking it's underwater, you know what I'm saying? So like, let's just run with that. Base Hyrule with a bunch of changes. I'd assume they're gonna add stuff, you know, the skies and then underwater or underground or whatever the new gameplay shit is gonna be. I think it's gonna have a lot more trouble running on a base Nintendo Switch. They're probably gonna need to run it on a Nintendo Switch Pro. Well, that makes sense. So what, what is this gonna mean for third-party games, okay? What kind of third-party games would release for the Nintendo Switch Pro? Um, older Call of Duties, maybe. I, I'm very interested to see how, you know, Call of Duty, because, you know, the director of Microsoft said that they want to put Call of Duty on the Nintendo Switch, and, you know, most third-party companies would, you know, want to put their third-party titles on the Nintendo Switch. Like, the Nintendo Switch is the best-selling console out right now. It's almost beating the PS4 in terms of overall numbers and um, in terms of how many people are buying it at a time. It's above the PS5, it's above the Series X. It's the best-selling console right now. Why wouldn't you want to capitalize off of that growth? I'm just interested because like, despite there being a Switch Pro, it's still like a Nintendo Switch. So obviously we're not seeing Modern Warfare 2 2022 coming out on the Nintendo Switch Pro because those graphics are insane. You already know the file size is probably gonna be like 200 gigs. I'm just interested to see like maybe, maybe Warzone would come out for the Nintendo Switch Pro. That's what I'm thinking because you know, the older Call of Duties, they don't support the older Call of Duties. Why would you put them out on the Nintendo Switch Pro, a new console? Why would you put old games that you don't support on a new console? You know what I'm saying? Also, there's going to be a break. There's not going to be a Call of Duty 2023. So at that time, I'm thinking they're going to remaster one of the older Call of Duties. And um, I do think that that will end up on the Nintendo Switch Pro. Assassin's Creed, uh, GTA, Elden Ring would probably be on there. Resident Evil. I'm just thinking of series that have had older titles of that series ported onto the Nintendo Switch. But those newer titles that became, you know, too big for the Nintendo Switch, you know, obviously was left out on the console because of just the scope of those newer games. Like for instance, we have old Resident Evil games on the Nintendo Switch, but the newer ones like Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil Village, those aren't out on the Nintendo Switch because the Switch can't run them. Same thing with Elden Ring, you know, Elden Ring is not out on the Switch, but the Dark Souls games are. Assassin's Creed, Odyssey, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, those games aren't on the Switch. Rogue and Black Flag are on the Switch, you know what I'm saying? The GTA trilogy, the first three GTAs are on the Nintendo Switch. GTA 5 isn't, but GTA 5 is literally on every other platform. It's on every platform, bro. So obviously the Nintendo Switch Pro is going to have, you know, GTA, all, all, of, all of those and pretty much any other third party game that can get a piece of the cake. So then the question arises, do we need a Switch Pro? Is it even a, a good time to have a Switch Pro or should they just move on to another console? We need a Switch Pro, okay? Nintendo's goal is to prolong the lifespan of the Nintendo Switch for as long as humanly possible. You can't do that when your own first party games are suffering. 
graphically and performance wise. Me, I don't play third party games on the Nintendo Switch unless they're really, really old. And I don't mind getting like the half assed experience that I'm getting on the Nintendo Switch. Like, for instance, I got Hungry Shark on the Nintendo Switch. Like, I'm not looking for performance when I'm playing Hungry Shark. I got the old Assassin's Creed games, you know what I'm saying? But, like, if I wanted the, the, the new uh, Lego Star Wars game, which I was looking at, you know what I'm saying? Am I gonna wanna play it on an input delay version? Like, I, I have a PC, I have a PS4, you know? Why would I get it on the Switch when it costs the exact same, but on the Switch, I'm getting it at 30 FPS, worse graphics, film grainy, uh, input delay on my pro controller oh my God, I, I i can't bro input delay is like synonymous with the nintendo switch bro that being said let's finally get into the specs of the nintendo switch pro so obviously we're going to be getting a dlss you know upscaled resolution nintendo switch and remember 500 million dollars on resources and development the screen is going to be 4k and it will most likely have an output of 4k 4k because it's dlss upscaling on our television screens or our monitors or whatever you use to game like like it's not really a selling point to some but like to others like me that's definitely a selling point because i'd imagine that you know there, there's going to be more impactful changes than you know just going from 1080p or 900p uh 30 fps to upscale 4k and that be the only selling point you know what i'm saying it at least has to one up the nintendo switch oled you know like one of the OLED selling points was that it had twice as much storage space as the normal Switch. 64 gigabytes, I know, so much. So I think that this Pro would at least have 128 gigabytes of storage, you know what I mean? Just at least DLSS would also allow for better frame rates. That's because I think there's like just a little less strain that the console in and of itself is doing to output the graphics on the screen and also we're going to get, get better looking games you know you're not going to have to see developers making cutbacks and sacrifices just because they're trying to port their game on a weaker console you know so less of that but yeah i definitely think frame rate and input delay will be mitigated with the switch pro and of course it's going to be backwards compatible obviously nintendo switch but what i'm thinking is like console transfer you know can i get my switch on the switch pro you know what i'm saying like as is hopefully you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like if you come back to my videos again or subscribe and i'm gonna go take care of this dog because he's whining like a little bitch peace out